Hi, and welcome to Poltex Tech Lightning. Today, we're diving into a crucial concept in the cloud computing, namely the Cloud Center of Excellence, also known as the CCOE. You might have heard this term floating around alongside similar phrases like the Cloud Competence Center. In this video, we'll unpack exactly what the CCO is and how it can revolutionize your approach to cloud adoption. Particularly, we're going to focus on the realm of Microsoft Azure. So let's get started. Here we go. Cloud Center of Excellence, CCOE, as we will now refer to, is not something inherent to just to Azure. It's an organizational concept, which is there to accelerate the journey to any cloud. There are many flavors of CCOE. You will see uh, that Gartner, Amazon, and Microsoft all have published their guidelines on the CCOE model and how to implement it. They are, of course, in big lines, very similar, but for this video, I will zoom in and focus on, on the Microsoft vision. The whole idea of the CCOE is to have one central team or authority who is responsible to ensure that the business can adopt the cloud without being held back by legacy processes or organizations within. Initially, the CCOE sets up all the guardrails in the public cloud. And when I say guardrails, I, for example, mean in Azure, Azure policies, which define what can and can't be done in the environment. When the application owners, when they require a component such as SQL Server, SQL database, they can quickly provision that themselves and start using it immediately. It's all about accelerating the adoption of the cloud without being slowed down by internal politics or processes. So let's have a look where this fits in the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, CAF. Now, I have an excellent video, which is linked in the description, if you want to take a deep dive into the CAF. For now, we will just have a look where the CCOE fits in the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework. If you recall, the CEF is a collection of documentation, implementation guidelines, and best practices to adopt the public cloud Azure. It has several pillars, which can be thought of as different phases in the public cloud adoption journey. The CCOE by Microsoft is part of the organized pillar of the CEF. This pillar not only talks about CCOE, but there's also cloud automation, uh, there's strategy and other topics which deals with managing the organizational alignment for the cloud adoption journey. Let's have a look at how this worked in practice for an organization. First, we will look at how to deploy IT resources within a company without using the CCOE approach. So you can imagine that the business, it has a street. And in this street, there are several controls that needs to take place and stoplights before it's able to adopt the public cloud. So each team are here, and there are different teams assigned to a different spotlight, such as security, networking, IT, and data platform. Each of these teams, once the request reaches there, need to review the request and implement their part. Now, this often leads to congestion, delays, and of course, an increased financial cost, as there are so many layers who are involved. With the CCOE model, the situation looks more like a roundabout. All the governance, such as the Azure policies, they have been put in place already, making sure that the environment it only accepts approved configurations. The application owners, who need, for example, an Excel database, they provision it themselves using pre-approved templates in the Azure environment. The resource is available immediately, and the application owners can start work. Obviously, operating with a CCOE is not something which can be done just overnight. It requires careful organizational planning and a setup of a good technical framework with guardrails, policies, remember, to ensure all company policies are met in the cloud. After all, you don't want someone to provision a virtual machine with a public IP address unless your policy specifically allows this. So, is a CCU model all sunshine and rainbows? Well, definitely not. While the concept and ideas are great, we can all agree on them, it may not be suitable for every company out there. You can see why the public cloud providers such as Amazon and Microsoft are pushing for this model. It allows for researchers 
which of course you can think of as income for them, to easily and quickly be provisioned and deployed. Second one to think about is, do you really want application owners to reprision their own resources? How do you handle 24 seven support on those resources? Are the application owners capable of doing that 24 seven? Do they even want to do that? It's nice to do it during business hours, but when everybody's gone home, who's handling it then? Uh, will the application owners also be provisioning a subset of resources, like only a, a database server? Or will they deploy all of the underlying resources? What about networking, connectivity, security, DNS? Those are all complex topic where the applications owner may not want to dive into because they are ultimately focused on the application and may not be so inclined on how to pick and configure the best resource in Azure. For example, do they need an Azure SQL VM? Do they need SQL Pass? Do they need an SQL managed instance? So you have a lot of options and a lot of flavors to choose from. So, I have now covered the general idea of a CCOE. Let's summarize this in five bullet points. We have the first one, definition and purpose. CCOE is an organizational concept aimed at accelerating the transition to the public cloud. It's not specific to any cloud provider such as Azure, but is applicable across various cloud platforms. Second, variants and guidelines. There are different variations of the CCOE, and major industry players like Gartner, Amazon, Microsoft publish their guidelines on implementing the CCOE model. Despite slight differences between them, the overarching principles remain the same or very similar. Number three, responsibilities. The primary responsibility of CCOE is to facilitate the smooth adoption of cloud technologies within the organization. This involves setting up uh, governance structures, defining policies, and removing barriers like legacy processes that may hinder cloud adoption. Four, guardrails and policies. CCOE establishes guardrails, such as policies in Azure to govern cloud usage. These guardrails ensure compliance, security and efficient resource allocation. We're at point five now, accelerating adoption. The ultimate goal of CCOE is to accelerate cloud adoption by streamlining processes and removing internal obstacles like politics and bureaucracy. All in all, I think that introducing a CCOE in a company should always be considered. It needs to be thought about. If suitable and implemented correctly, it can definitely provide tangible benefits. That's all I had in this episode of Poltex Tech Lightning. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content on cloud technologies. Until next time, stay curious and keep innovating. See you.